When you're ready to step away from your camera, or perhaps live that wire-free lifestyle, a lapel mic is the best thing that you can do. As a YouTuber who has been in the space for about 10 years now, the first thing that I did after upgrading my camera was figure out that I needed to upgrade my audio. And, as you might expect, the first place that I went was Rode, and I got myself the Rode Wireless Go review over there in the corner. And it's been a staple on my channel for years. Almost a year ago, I changed to the DJI mic. If you want to take a look back and try and figure out when exactly I did that, let me know in the comment section below if you can figure it out. I'm going to give you a hint. You're probably not going to be able to because the sound quality that you get from the DJI mic set here compared to the Rode is very similar. And that's one of the first things that I learned on YouTube. Your audio means a lot more than your video. People will forgive shoddy video. But if your audio sounds like garbage, people are going to click off really quickly. For me, one of the biggest differences between the Rode mic set that I had and the DJI one is this right here. This is a carrying case that houses your transmitters and your receivers. Not only that, it automatically charges them while they're in the box. See that down there? That lets you know how much charge is left of the case itself. Paired automatically so that when you open the box up, you can get right to work, even if you have no experience with audio equipment. The case itself is actually textured, which I kind of like because it gives me something to grip onto. The back there, you can see this charges via USB 3.0. There is an 1800 milliamp battery in here, which takes three hours to charge. But the good thing about that is, unlike my Rode set, where I had to charge each of these individually and have them dangling around with a bunch of cables, everything lives compactly in here. And I don't have to worry about carrying around extra cables just to charge the accoutrement. Another thing that I like is, it's all magnetic. Everything stays in place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the things that we get. We get our transmitter, our receiver, we get a set of two if you happen to get this particular model which I really like because then I can just use one, kill the battery, and then jump to the other one if I need to. You'll notice down in there, each of them has a little seat with some pogo pins that connect to the back of the device itself, and that's how they start charging. One of the other things that I appreciate with the DJI over the road set is these. These here are connectors, and they will connect to your receiver, allowing it to, one, in this case, be attached to a Android phone that uses USB-C, or over here, if you're in that Apple universe, they have a lightning connector right there. This will allow you to use this mic set, not only to get mic on something like I have here, which is my digital SLR, but allow you to get better audio out of your smartphone. Yes, we know the smartphones can take great pictures, almost rivaling digital SLRs now. However, audio is not always the greatest, especially in the case of my Pixel 5. So being able to attach my transmitter and receiver so that I can use them with my Pixel 5 is a game changer for me. If you are using all the items that come with the DJI mic set here, so the two transmitters and the one receiver, use all the battery in them, you can fully recharge everything here 1.8 times. So almost two full rotations of usage and charging. That helps extend the amount of time that you could spend in the field and not have to worry about charging or bringing extra equipment with you. I mentioned that I was coming from the Rode mic set and granted, they now have the Rode 2, but the Rode Mic 1 and the Rode 2 are very similar in size. So my big thing coming from that is what is the size difference between the DJI set and the Rode set? Let's take a quick look at that for right now. Size comparison for the DJI Mic, Rode Mic 1 receivers. Here you can see on the left, I have the original version of the Rode Mic. And on this side, I have the DJI. Kind of put them together. The DJI is smaller in form factor. One of the things that you might have seen is, well, Rode, even the version 2 of this, the information is located at the top. So if this is on your camera, it's hard to see. On DJI, it faces forward. Some people might not realize just how small these receivers already are. So here they are both in the palm of my hand. And here I have a deck of cards with the road on it in the corner. And then I will place the DJI, giving you an idea of just how small these already are. And the fact that the DJI is even smaller means that it takes up less space. Here we have the Rode and the DJI transmitter. I know, again, size comparison might not really come across, but the Rode is really small, but the DJI is even smaller. If we put the DJI on top of the Rode, it is pretty much half the size. Width is roughly the same, but it is half the size. The Rode has this shiny plastic on it. Even the new version, the Rode 2, has that shiny plastic. DJI is kind of this matte finish all around, and if you update the firmware, you can have that light turn off when you are recording. And what we're going to do, we're going to bring our deck of cards back into play, just so you can see, here is the Rode. It's pretty much the same as the receiver, 
in size. And then we're going to put the DJI right there. And you can see the DJI is remarkably small and it's blinking because it's trying to find the DJI receiver. And there we go. Both of them on a single deck of cards, giving you an idea of just how small these two are, but the DJI is definitely smaller. I was amazed at how small this was in comparison. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a closer look at one of our receivers here. This is what I really appreciate. The matte finish all around means that it's not going to reflect light. You could see right there, it's trying to pair and I will open up my case so we don't see that blinking, but it comes paired automatically out of the box. But you could change whether that light is on. And then over here, there's another light. That red light indicates if you're doing internal recording because there is eight gigabytes of internal storage on the transmitter, giving you 14 hours of recording directly to the transmitter itself. I don't know about you, but I have definitely pulled out my lavalier mic, lost connection to my camera, and lost that audio. With the DJI set here, you don't have to worry about that. And all of it can be controlled by these buttons on the side. Right here, we have our record button. So right there, now it is recording internal audio, and it vibrates unless you change that, which I'll show you how to do that a little later. If we no longer want to have this recording, we simply press again and it turns off. Notice right there, blinking, letting us know things are happening. If for whatever reason, your receiver does not pair anymore, simply select the pairing button and you can link it to the receiver. Coming across to the other side, we have a power button. This will allow you to power down the device. So if you're like me and want to leave the mic attached to your actual setup and not take it in and out of the box, well, you don't have to but you could press and hold that and it will turn the transmitter off. Right there, there also is a USB-C port right there, which will allow you to charge this separately if you need to, or for those internal recordings, allows you to pull them off just by attaching this to a computer. The computer will pick it up like a USB drive and you just drag and drop what you want. It's great. Coming to the back here, this is one of the things that I like. It not only has a clip, but a very powerful magnet that allows you to put this in interesting locations that you couldn't, in my case, using the road. On the top there, you actually have a 3.5 millimeter jack there, so you can plug in something like a, a lapel mic, but you also have this, a microphone. So you don't even need a lapel mic. You could use this straight out of the box like this. You'll notice that there are little cuts right there, and that is because they have a wind muff that comes with this. One of the things I like about the wind muff is based on the way that it is set up, I always screw this up, but you can screw the wind muff in so that you can see I'm giving it a little tug, it's not gonna go anywhere. One of my problems with the Rode wind muff was that it came off way too easily because it was only clipped in. You don't have to worry about that with the DJI set here. Last but not least, on the bottom, you just have your connection points that allow to charge and pair to the box itself here. Speaking of the case and the charging right down there, you have a 320 milliamp internal battery giving you five hours of usage. If we bring the case into play and put this in, you could get 15 hours of usage out of the transmitter. So if you're like me and normally running a single shoot, you can swap these out and extend your record time almost indefinitely. Once placed into the carrying case and charger, it does take 70 minutes to fully charge the transmitter. For those of you that are more into specifications, I will put the full list of specifications for the audio portion down in the description area below. Next, we're gonna take a look at the receiver. Right there, you could see charge indicators as well as how much space is left in each of our transmitters. If we take this out, we will see a DJI screen and then we see some extra information. We'll talk about that momentarily. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna lock my screen so that if I touch it, it's not gonna do anything. One of the best things that the DJI set has over even the Rode Go 2 is this LCD screen and its position. The fact that it's on the front and not the top means that if I'm sitting behind the camera, this will be facing towards me. If I have the camera facing the other way and I want it facing me, I can do that. Rode, you always have to look over your camera to see what's going on. So in my case, I can see right now that both microphones are picking me up very well, and I know what their levels are. With the Rode, there have been times where I was spiking the audio and did not realize it because I wasn't looking over my camera. The rest of the receiver here, on the one side, we have a power button, we have our USB-C, so if we need to charge this or update the firmware, which is a great thing that DJI has been doing, is updating the firmware, allowing you to, hey, make this better with changes that they make. And they listen to their users with some of the updates that they made. For me, since I didn't get this day one right when they came out, I got the advantage of just jumping in and getting the firmware right away and experiencing in its new updated glory. And firmware is just as easy as going to their website, downloading it, 
plugging in and dragging and dropping a file and waiting for it to update the firmware. Coming across to the side here, we have an output and headphones. So output is going to be what you plug into your camera. Headphones is if you have somebody who's working with you and wants to monitor the sound, well, they'll have the headphone set right there. On the back, you have your charging connections, and then you have this. This is your shoe mount. Now the shoe mount can slip in and out and then is replaceable with either your Android phone or iOS phone mount. I will say this is one of the places that I think they could do better. This does feel like cheap plastic and is tricky to get in and out of there. The screen, as I mentioned, is one of the big reasons that I like this over the road set, but there's a lot of things that you can do on this touch screen. So let's take a moment to go through all of our settings and options. Starting off, when we open up our box, you could see the transmitter status as well as the receiver, letting you know, hey, all of them are charging. They are currently paired with each other and a little difficult to see with my particular filming setup, but there you go. You could see 15.1 hours under a folder. What that means is each of the transmitters on their internal storage for backups has a full 15.1 hours of space that they can do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull one of my receivers out and bring our receiver into focus. So starting at the top, you could see right there, that is mode in which we are currently recording our audio. That is transceiver one, letting you know the connection strength between the two. And then we can see the, the remaining battery for transmitter one. And then down here, this is the battery level for the receiver. And then here, is our audio coming from this, letting you know, hey, if I bring it up here, it's gonna start peaking and then put back down over there. If I open up our case again, you're gonna notice in a moment, now there are two transmitters, each showing our level right there. If we wanted to manipulate anything on this screen, and this is the beauty of this, way up from the bottom, and you can see this is for transceiver one, I can do the recording. Now it's recording to transceiver one. I can turn that off. I can select to mute transmitter one. Uh, so if I need to, from afar, mute my talent because they keep talking. I can do that right from here. And then if I select this, it will allow me to format, which will clear the space of the internal memory of my transmit. Oh, we don't necessarily need to do that. So I'm just gonna swipe down, bring us back to this menu. If I swipe down again, now I can either swipe up on the right-hand side, which will show me transmitter two. Or if I do it on the left-hand side, transmitter one, that is an interesting feature that you get with this. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna swipe down from the top and we're gonna start with our menu settings. Right here, this is our audio. So I am on mono, meaning both transmitters will record to a singular audio channel. Sounds something like this. All right, now we're gonna try having two mics on. And looks like this on the project timeline. If I select mono, I could see transmitter left and right all going to a single channel. If I select this, now I have mono with a safety channel wiping up from the bottom twice brings us back to the main page here so that we can see auto with a safety channel and if i open up my box of tricks again there that's what that looks like and we're going to swipe down back to our auto with a safety channel we have stereo left and right it's letting me know transmitter one is the left transmitter two is the right i can tap on that and inverse it or put it back now you might ask yourself why is that important well for me I know I always take my transmitter from the left-hand side of my carrying case, so I will always know that that will be the left audio. That's how it works for me. However, for you, if you want to reverse that, they let you do that. For an audio example of what left and right channels sound like, here we go. Oh, my lovely assistant to start speaking. Hello from the right side. She could say a little more. Hello, how are you doing today? And this is what that looked like on a project timeline. I'm going to come back to stereo, select mono, and swipe up to return to my previous menu. If I swipe over to the over to the right, this is receiver gain. So this is the gain that the receiver will apply to the transmitters coming in. Selecting that, well, you can see I'm at zero. I could slide this all the way to the left and have negative 12 dB, and all the way to the right and have plus 12 dB. Now, the one thing that I wish was a little better was that when I try and come back to the center, you see, it took me a little time to get there. I wish there was a double tap to recenter that. But this is the receiver gain. Now, I specify that because as we move along, there will be other places that we can select the transmitter gain, allowing us to alter just a singular device coming into the receiver. Coming over to the right, well, this is our headphone volume. Again, we have a negative 12 to positive 12 dB. So if we plug in headphones into the side of our receiver right here, 
This will allow us to listen to audio and we can increase the volume if we're in a very loud situation. Swiping and coming over to the transmitter setting. I'm gonna select this. Here we have our low cut filter, selecting that. Well, you can see I have it on, but you can have it off. What this will do is try and cut out some of those lower tones that kind of get in the way of your audio at times. Not everybody uses it, but it's there if you need it. Here we have transmitter gain. So if I select this right now, I have transmitter one and transmitter two, and I can from here select again, negative 12 to positive 12 per transmitter, allowing me to make up for somebody who has a low, louder speaking voice on one and a lower speaking voice on another. I like the fact they give you so much customization built right into this little device. Next, we're gonna come over to record stop lock. Well, if we select this, we wanna have record stop lock on or off. By default, that's off, but there's another way that we can enable the lock, which I'll show you momentarily. Over on our transmitter settings, we have auto record selecting this you have on and off what that allow you to do is once you pull the transmitter out of the box once it's already been paired this will allow for recording to start directly on your transmitter it's very good especially if you happen to accidentally remove your your receiver cable and have lost audio we've all done that at one point in our youtube career next we have our vibration notice vibration notice is very useful especially with the receiver because well maybe i want to mute myself or maybe i want to turn it off i want a vibration letting me know, hey, this has happened. This actually is something that came with a fairly recent firmware because DJI actually listens to the user. This will allow me to, if I select this, have low, medium, and high, or completely off the lights on my transmitter. So right now I have it on high. If I select low, I can barely see that's on now, and I could turn that all the way off if I wanted to. Notice that is done in real time. It is great, especially if you need to hide this on your talent and want to keep the light affecting your shot. Flipping up more time, and we're gonna do that again because that was all of our transmitter settings. Coming over, these are our generic settings. By default, it's on brightness. I'm gonna swipe all the way to the left because this is ink devices. If you happen to not have these automatically pair on your own, you can come in here and manually pair new transmitter. Coming over, we have brightness. This is going to be the brightness for the receiver itself. Next is language. Lots of choices there. By default, depending on the region, you get it. Next is date and time. So like that, well, you can set your specific date and time. And here you can see the exact date and time as to when I filmed this segment of the video. And then last but not least over here, we have factory reset, which will put everything back to factory, which means also if you happen to have downloaded any firmware, that pushes it all the way back. And then here we have version, which will allow us to see our firmware version, as well as our transmitter version. There is a serial number in there as well, but we're not going to show you that. And then compliance info right there, selecting that. Well, it's going to give you a little bit of information that you could read on a bitty tiny screen, but it's not actually necessary. But that is everything that you can do from the touchscreen menu right here. Well, one of the biggest things that I have with touchscreens is what if I accidentally touch that? Well, if we come over to the power button and quickly tap that, well, now you see it says screen lock. So no matter what I do, that is not going to affect my screen. And it's simply come back and tap and it unlocks it and I can do what I need to do. So great if you're a little clumsy like I am, that is a look at the menu system for the DJI transmitter and receiver. As you saw, there's lots that you can do to make adjustments without having to go into a third party program. But the reason that you're here is it's a mic set. You wanna know how it sounds. Let's take a listen to some audio samples that I tested for the DJI mic set. All right, this is a audio test for the DJI mic. I'm holding it slightly in front of my face. There is some waves lapping here. Well, not quite as breezy as I would like. Holding it perpendicular, we're gonna kinda spin the mic around a little bit so that we can see if without the dead cat on it, and now I'm gonna point it down, if it picks up any extra audio from out. Now facing the other way, and then we're gonna bring this back up again, just to see if there is any audio that is picked up. All right, and same distance away, dead cat is on. Kinda wish I was not fiddling with the mic test right now. Missed a bald eagle snatching something out of the Hudson right over there but we're gonna kind of pan around, give you something to look at while I'm actually doing this test. So breeze has kind of cut down significantly, but we're gonna twist the mic around, face it parallel to the deck going left, and now I'm going to aim it to the bottom so that the mic is furthest away from me. And we're gonna flip this back up one more time and give you a look out there into the Hudson on this kind of hazy day. All right, now we're gonna try having two mics on. I have one lapel to me and then one to my assistant who will say hi. Hi. 
just to give you an idea of what it's like when you're working with a single track that kind of blends the two together. If she says something else. Something else. She's very helpful for these things, but this gives you an idea of what audio sounds like when they're merged into a single track. This is going to be an example of both transmitters as we spin around, but we're now in stereo left-right channels. So if you're listening to this right now, mine should sound like it's coming from your left headset. Probably should have told you to put a headset on sooner. That would have been smart. Now, if I tell my lovely assistant to start speaking. Hello from the right side. She could say a little more. Hello, how are you doing today? She was going to joke around and do supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Now, we are both going to try and say that at the same time so that you hear what it sounds like in stereo. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. There you go. All right, so that is an example of the transmitters on left-right channels. There you heard some audio samples. Hopefully, that helps you understand a little more of what this is capable of. The case, as well as the transmitter and receivers, are not the only thing that you get with the DJI mic set. You also get a carrying pouch, which I don't particularly care for. It's not as good as what I think they originally sent out with it. It's just a nylon patch with some branding. But you get, along with the receiver, two wind muffs, because it's important that you have those, the case itself, and then this. This is the 3.5 to 3.5 that you get for the receiver. It is a thick cable. It is substantial. I don't use it. I actually use one of my road cables that came with one of my other microphones because this just is the weak point of the entire system. It is too thick. It is too cumbersome to use or place anywhere. In my opinion, not great. Good it comes with it, but not as useful as I would like. One last data point for you. If you're like me and you're coming from the road world to the DJI world, you might want to know what the audio sounds like between the two. So here's a raw audio sample of the Rode 1 versus the DJI mic set. This audio sample is coming from the Rode Mic 1 wireless transmitter and receiver. I'm speaking in a normal tone and giving you something to look at with my Canon cap here, since I don't have anything else to look at. This is an audio test for the DJI Mic wireless transmitter and receiver. I currently have the receiver placed in the same place I had my Rode 1 microphone. So Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three. And honestly, for myself, those are the few downfalls that I could think of for the DJI mic set. So what are my final thoughts? As you might imagine, I was really surprised by the DJI mic set here. Honestly, when I hear DJI, I think of drones, just like you do, probably. But they have built a solid mic set that professionals and novices like myself really enjoy and get a lot of use out of. For me, the fact that I have a case that always keeps my equipment charged and at the ready and I can just pick up and throw in my bag is game changing for me. The screen, being able to read it while I'm behind my camera or make changes on the fly with the touch screen was something that I wanted but didn't realize that another company would do it better before Rode did. Because of that, if you're on the fence about checking out the DJI mic set, I strongly recommend checking it out for yourself. In fact, if it's a little too pricey, they actually make a single set now where you can get one transmitter and one receiver. So if you're ready to enhance your audio, check out the DJI mic set. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making in-depth reviews like this, make sure to hit that like button so that other people will find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here and wanna be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. If you're still unsure if the DJI mic set is the right mic set for you, take a look at the video on the screen now of my previous review of the Rode microphone set. Hopefully that'll help you make an informed decision for yourself.